My name is Claude Clodier. I'm here to hopefully answer any questions that you may have regarding the uh, function of the monotype keyboard. Back at the, the late 1800s, the 1880s, uh, several people tried to develop and uh, invent a typesetting machine because prior to that, uh, most of your type was set by hand. A compositor would have to do that all by hand. As you could see up above, there's a California job case. In the 1880s, it, Several people try to come out with these uh, automatic machines. Now this machine here works off of basically the same method that you would with a player piano. Punches holes in that paper that's up top to give directions to a caster who will cast the uh, uh, individual characters. On the keyboard, you had lowercase, uppercase. This would say, say it's uh, Times Roman. Well. On the right-hand side, you would have Times Roman, lowercase, uppercase, but italic. Some keyboards also have, you have small caps, the same face, but all capital letters, but smaller than the original one. You have to take this off and change this rack. So as you hit a key, these would move up and would punch a hole in that paper. The measurement that you used to set the width was this here, which was set in picots. There are six picots to the inch. In order to make a justified line, you had to take the remaining space and divide it between each space. And that's what this did for you. As you hit a space, an arm went up here, and this turned and it calculated the code that you had to put in. You put the code in here to tell the caster, whenever a space code appears, cast the character uh, a space that width. So the line would come out justified all the way down. Once this paper up here with all these holes in it, would go to the uh, caster. The last thing that you you typed in here was the code that you that you hit to space it out. Well, that would be the first thing that would go through the caster. When it read that code, it would set the wedge on the caster so that when the code appeared for space, it would cast a, a space that width so that your line would come out justified. How the caster works with those two holes, one hole would move that caster this way, the other hole would move that that way so that it would move it precisely over the mold and, up, and underneath the mold was a pump and it was liquid lead this would, this would come down hard, and this would come up, and it would shoot the metal in there. And because it was water cool, it instantly froze that metal, that, so it became solid. 
and it would pull it out and put it in a line until the whole line was done. Once the whole line was done, it would move it out and slide it onto a uh, gallon. And that, that would continue going on until the whole job was done. Linotype is basically what they say. It's all on one slug and it's sitting at the top. This is called a slug or a line. Yep. There are characters sitting on top of that. If there was an error in that, you couldn't correct it by just lifting one character out. You would have to send the whole slug back to the linotype machine. Linotype works on at the upper portion of it, there's a case with all kind of brass molds. So within that, if he was set in one line, if there was uh, 10 E's or 7 A's, he would have to have a matrix for each one of those. When, as he hit that letter, it would slide down and fall into a line as he typed them in. Once the line was filled, he had a lever that he would push down on and it would take that whole line and run it over to where the um, mold was to cast that whole slug. It would cast the whole thing and then take it out and put it on the gallon. Uh, where in monotype, the caster has a matrix about this big and they're all square, probably about that wide brass and they're all the mold so that if you had the 10 E's and 5 A's in one line it would use that same one each time you didn't need a uh, separate uh, matrix each time it would use that same one every time